G'day, I'm Steve. Hey, welcome to the wonderful world of woodworking, where we're all going to go back to basics. Now, my intention with this series is to teach basic skills that lay a great foundation for advanced skills down the road. A recent video I did was on hand saws, how to square cut, cross cut, how to do a mitre cut, how to do a rip cut using back saws and rip saws. The next one I want to cover is the plane. In my honest opinion, a workshop is not a workshop unless it's got a hand plane in it. There's something special about hearing the sound of a shaving coming off a sharp blade and the feel of the wood afterwards. So as you can tell, I've got a fair few. I've got over 50 planes all told and they all get used and all have different applications. But what I want to cover is the basic cabinet maker's planes. When I started out building fine furniture over 30 years ago, all I had was a number seven, a number three, and this block plane. There they are. Now, it wasn't until many, many years later that I started to get a bit of a bug for collecting them, and I found out that, hey, certain planes had different uses, and I had my certain favourites. But that's all I needed to start off with, and believe me, I did a lot of furniture just using those three planes. I'm venturing that you could actually get away with two planes. If you've got a number four, and that's all you've got, you can still have fun with woodwork. The tips, tricks, and techniques I'm going to share today will work just as well with the number four. But I find that, personally, I don't like the number four. I like to have a very small variety of planes. So, if you want to do big stuff, and you want to do it by hand, and you don't want to go to the expense or your budget won't stretch to getting a number three and a number seven, go for a five and a half. A five and a half is a good all-round plane. It will do smoothing if you needed to, it will do joining boards if you needed to, and it can remove a lot of stock if you needed to. A block plane you will need no matter what other plane. If you want to go for a smaller uh, genre of work, if you like, if you want to do boxes and little stools and picture frames and what have you, then a five and a quarter, which is smaller than a five and a half, but it's bigger than a four and bigger than a three, but it's got a narrow sole on it. So that's my suggestion there. These, I don't think they're made anymore, the Stanley ones, but they do have a Veritas make one, I know, and that's a very diff Veritas five and a quarter. Slightly bigger than the Stanley, but a very nice plane to use, and we'll use this one a little bit later on. But to set up your plane, I'll deal with them separately. First off, the cabinet plane. Just put these away. And don't get hung up about putting your plane down on the bench or putting it that way. Honestly, it doesn't make a difference. I prefer putting it that way, and then if I throw something on my bench, it's not going to hit the bottom of my blade. So, to set up a hand plane, remove all the bits. To make sure the frog, which is this assembly here, is level with the back of the mouth down here. There's an adjustment screw at the back, if I can find it, there, that you screw in, which will move this assembly forward or backwards. So that's critical. Have that lined up with the mouth. If it's projected too far, you're going to have no support for the cutting edge of the blade, and if it's too far back, you run the risk of kinking the blade and lifting the cutting edge off the ideal angle. Next, make sure the blade is sharp. And I covered that in a recent stream, how to sharpen blades. The back of the blade has to be flat and the bevel has to be sharp. A lot of times uh, you can use a secondary bevel, which means your primary bevel is actually ground to 25 degrees and you put a secondary bevel on there at 30 degrees. There are jigs you can get for that. You can do it by eye. Personally, I grind all my planes at 30 degrees straight, but that's because I use Atomic 
and I can get the same angle all the time. But whatever you choose, get that nice and flat on the back, sharp on the front. With the chip breaker, I have it so it is about three 30 seconds back from the edge of the blade and square like that. Tighten it up. Put that into the throat assembly. Wiggle the lateral lever to seat it. Put the locking cap iron on and lock it down. Now this tension should not be that hard. You really have to push and your thumb goes white or so loose it just flops back. It's got to be a firm pressure like that. Turn it up, look down the sole and the blade's pointing up. There's a very good chance it's going to be pointing up here or here. So with the lateral lever, move it towards the edge that is pointing up. In this case, it was pointing up here, so I've moved the lateral lever this way and that's made it nice and flat. Don't want too much blade out. So wind it back a bit. Better off to wind it back too much and approach gently than having a lot of blade hanging out and having it snag. Put a little bit of candle grease on it, just on the toe, not on the heel. And lean into it. A little bit more blade out. And there we go. Getting nice shavings. That's how to set the plane up. Similarly with a block plane. The major difference here is when the blade goes into the plane, the bevel is facing up. On the bench plane, it faces down. On a block plane, it faces up. Again, make sure the back's nice and flat and it's got a nice edge on it. So with the bevel facing up, put it in. This has got three mounting holes, so pick whichever one you desire. I'll put mine in the middle one. And then put the locking cap iron on the top. And there you go. Same thing. Look down the sole of the plane. And if it's poking up on one side, just ease the lateral over to that side. When you're looking for a block plane, I like the ones that have a movable mouth. That way, when you're doing end grain, you can use it and you won't get tear out. We'll just see how that's going to work. Nice fine shavings. And on the end grain, you get nice fine shavings off of that. So that's setting the planes up. I'm going to change planes now only because these are the ones I use most of the time and I'm used to them. This one uh, has a slightly different mechanism for setting up. It's a modern plane, it's a Veritas. It's a five and a quarter and it has, the back frog is actually adjustable behind the plane. So that setup's a little bit different. And the lateral is, also the lever that pushes out the blade. But everything else is the same. This block plane again has an adjustable mouth and it's nice too. It's a Veritas as well. The, the difference between them, if you buy um, one of these style, when they come, you have to do a fair bit of work to flatten the sole and you have to do a fair bit of work on the framework itself. Cleaning it up, get rid of any dags, flatten it, making sure it's true. I've found with these, straight out of the box, two things, they're already sharp 
and they're already set, so I don't have to do any work on them.